Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows Memphis Build 1351 in PCM or 86 box. This is my first ever tutorial with PCM or 86 box that I'm doing here. Um, there was a lot of requested uh, comments there that people wanted to see some PCM and 86 box tutorials. Uh, so figured I'd give it a shot. Uh, I have been testing them out for a few weeks now and I've actually really started to like uh, using PCM and 86 box for some of the older operating systems um, such as Windows 95, Windows 98, those kinds of things um, since it's really what it's mainly used for. Um, and I have found it a lot easier to install the beta operating systems in these versus VirtualBox or VMware because you do run into errors uh, with those and they are tougher to install um, with this uh, you know this has its own you know built-in BIOS it's basically emulating an older computer which is really nice uh, for doing these older installations of you know the older uh, operating systems so uh, with that being said we're just going to go ahead and get straight into the video here um, in the description there will be uh, links to download the ISO for Windows Memphis build 1351 I'll also have a link for the uh, boot disk that you'll need. You'll need the Windows 95 uh, floppy disk uh, for the boot disk to get the files to copy over. Um, you'll see that part in this video. Um, and then there will all be links in the description here. I'll make sure I get the correct ones before pasting them in there, but uh, links to the 86 box website, as well as a link to uh, PCM uh, to get uh, either one of those downloaded. It's pretty much the same thing for each one of these. I will be using 86 box in this tutorial, um, but for the most part, I think it is pretty much the same in either one of them. Um, so with that being said, what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and um, open up the 86 box manager here. Um, recommend that you have that with 86 box if you don't. Um, I'm sure most of you watching this probably already have the manager downloaded or 86 box or PCM downloaded either one. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a new machine here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this Windows Memphis. And I'm going to check to configure this virtual machine now and add. And that's going to create the uh, virtual machine or say it was successfully created. And now in here uh, for machine uh, type here. Um, I've usually done uh, socket 7 dual voltage uh, and then for the machine I do the uh, epox or um, this one right here and then for the CPU I do uh, Intel Pentium MMX with a 233 speed and then I do 128 megabytes of memory that is the highest you can put on this uh, if you try to go any higher it does not um, I disable time synchronization and then on the display uh, for video, I do the, if we scroll down here to, um, there's a lot of different ones in here, so it's gonna be tougher to find it. Um, for this one, uh, the one that I've had the most luck with is one of the, it's one of these S3 ones here, tougher to find in the list here. Um, the S3 Trio 64 uh, Phoenix is usually the one that I have the most luck with on um, the installs and getting 256 colors right out of the gate. Um, so I do select that and I do also check uh, Voodoo graphics here. And then on input devices, I just have this set to uh, standard PS2 mouse. Uh, for sound, for the sound card, we'll choose Sound Blaster 16. Um, and then in this drop down menu, I did fluid synth and then no, no other changes on that for network type. I just did the bottom one here and the bottom one here. Uh, I don't think it really matters because I usually don't really uh, use the network features on it anyways. Um, nothing you'll need to change in ports. Um, for the storage controllers, you want to have your HD controller be a IDE controller. Um, and then for going into hard disk here, this is where we'll create our hard disk so we can do new. And then for the file name, we'll type Windows Memphis, uh, or you can name whatever you wish. And then for the size, um, you'll want to make this at least two gigs. Um, so if you type in 2048, I know it doesn't do it right exactly there. It's kind of a little bit 
uh, finicky with the numbers, but as long as it's right around two gigs, or if you go over it, even if you do three or four, that's fine. Uh, just make sure that uh, everything is set as it is and the channel's at zero, zero. Hit okay. It will create your uh, drive and insert it into here. Um, and then for floppy and CD-ROM drives, uh, we can disable the second one here. And then I usually just change this one to a 3.5 inch 1.44 on the floppy here. And for CD-ROM, um, for this I do uh, ATAPI and then uh, 24x uh, speed here for it. Make sure the channel is at 0, 1. And then no other changes you need to make for the other peripherals or removable, removable devices. So after that, uh, go ahead and hit OK. And then now what we can do is go ahead and uh, make sure that's highlighted and start the machine. And then once this opens up, click inside of it and hit delete. It'll get you into the BIOS. Um, for this, you can either hit F8 and F2 combined or push in your middle mouse to exit out of the machine. Um, to make it so you can have it full screen and it doesn't have any issues, could just go to view and do resizable window and it'll full screen it without any problems. So uh, now that we're in the BIOS here, we're going to need to enter the BIOS state uh, for this version of Memphis. So in here, you want to click in, um, hit enter on standard CMOS setup. And then uh, for the date, uh, you use the page up and down to change it. So we we'll want this set to uh, December 13th, 1996. Um, and then you can change the time if you want. I usually just leave it as it is just so I don't run into any issues. Um, then once that's done, you can escape out of that. Um, I think this should be set for the boot sequence. If you go into the advanced or the BIOS feature setup, um, should be just set to A, C, and then C, uh, SCSI. Um, just leave that as is. I believe that's going to be how it is set as default. Go ahead and go down to save and exit. Type Y to save and hit enter. It's going to restart the machine uh, before it does start up completely. You'll want to enter in your disk. So go up to the floppy and then uh, choose a file. And then you'll want to go to where you have the Windows 95 uh, boot disk saved. It should be called disco1.img. Um, and then for the CD-ROM, if you go in and select that image, uh, go and find the Memphis beta um, that you have downloaded uh, 1351 ISO. So um, got to go quite a ways in for mine. Um, there it is. And then once you have those inserted, uh, it may do it starting up already. Uh, just do go up and hit reset and then it'll reset the machine and it should have uh, eventually boot us into the floppy here. We just give it some time it will eventually boot up it will say starting windows 95 and then we'll hit enter to load that top driver there and it'll load the drive now of course you notice this is a lot slower than doing it in virtualbox or vmware um, again this is emulating older hardware so it's going to run slower um, like it did back in the day as well. So now on this, we'll need to type F disk. We're gonna to need to do a format of the disk and hit enter and then do Y to enable large disk support and then make sure it's set to create a DOS partition. We're gonna create a primary DOS partition and then hit enter one more time. And then now we can do another machine reset. And then and again, it'll just load everything up and load us back into our boot disk. And then once it loads back into the boot disk, again, we'll just uh, hit the top option when it comes up to load that uh, CD-ROM driver. It'll load that driver up. And then once that driver loads up, it'll tell us uh, it does change the uh, CD-ROM drive from C to D because we did format the hard drive now, and that is now being recognized as drive C. And speaking of that, we do need to do a format of it by typing format C colon, hit enter. And then it'll prompt us uh, that all uh, data will be um, lost on the disk. Just type Y to proceed, hit enter. It's gonna format the disk and 
uh, do some other changes on that. Um, and it'll ask for a volume label. You can just enter, hit enter to not have one or type in one if you would li uh, like there. And now once we have that formatted, um, this is the part where we're gonna wanna copy these setup files from the disk over there. So if you go to the D drive and do a directory of it there, you'll see there's a Win9x folder and that is what we're gonna copy over. So we're now gonna direct ourselves to the C drive for the hard drive here. And to create our directory where we're gonna go these into, uh, just type in mkdir win9x. Um, we're just gonna call it the same thing. And then to get into it, just do cd win9x. It'll take us into that directory. And then to copy the files into it, just type copy d colon backslash win9x. And then it's gonna start uh, copying all the files over. This can take a little bit of time for that to do since there's a good amount of files that it has in there to copy over. Um, but then once it is done, uh, copying all those files here, it'll tell us that all of them have been copied. So once we have all of those done, there's a lot of cab files here that it does copy over on this. Um, that are in the files here. So again, once this co uh, copied over, it should give you the amount of files copied. And now we can go ahead and just type setup and hit enter. And from this now you can go up to media and you can eject um, the disks for both the floppy and the ISO. Both of those can be ejected now. And we can click back in, the mouse should work, and we can go ahead and continue on setup. And you can see the Memphis setup, um, they did change that right away in this beta series um, from Windows 95. Um, and now we'll get the license agreement to come up. So just go ahead and accept the license agreement, hit next, uh, choose a directory, just leave it at C Windows, hit next. And it's gonna check for installed components and available disk space. It's going to ask for uh, setup options on what you'd want to do. Uh, normally, just do typical for the most part. You can do custom, and on this, uh, so it'll ask you for typing in a name and company. Do that as you wish, and go to next. Um, I usually just make sure everything in multimedia is uh, checked. Um, it did it automatically, but I usually just make sure everything in here is checked so that it has all the sounds. I think it usually does it by default, but I usually just go in here and double check. Um, and then you can skip this, uh, hit next, and now it'll get to the startup disk. If you hit next, it'll uh, come up with the inserting the disk. Just hit cancel on that, and then go ahead and hit next to start the copying of files. Uh, so this part will take some time, again, since it is emulating on some older hardware. Uh, it does actually go, for, uh, you know, not too bad here um, at the start, and it starts to slow down a bit. So I'm gonna let these files copy over, and then once I'm done, I'll come back to you guys once it's close to being finished, and we come to our first restart point. Okay, so it will have us restart here. I did uh, just miss that point there, but once it's finished doing the copying of files, it will automatically reboot, and then it will boot up into the Memphis setup once more. You can see on the bottom right here too, um, that it does say Microsoft Memphis uh, and 1351 is the build version there. Uh, so once it boots up again into the setup, it's gonna do some hardware detection here, uh, setting up of hardware. Um, and then once that's done, it will just kind of continue through the setup um, as kind of seen with the traditional uh, setup for these operating systems. So um, again, this can take a little bit of time um, since this is running slower than uh, using the different virtualization programs. Um, but once that is done, it will continue. So I'm just gonna let the uh, hardware detection continue and come back once that's close to being done. All right, so getting close to done here on the hardware detection. And then once it's done, uh, we'll come up with uh, some more setting up of the hardware here. Uh, so just let it run through that. And then I believe Yep, as you can see, it's going to try and uh, load that here. It'll come up, yep, with the date and time uh, and time zone properties here. So just choose your specified time zone. Um, date and time should still be set to that December 13th, 1996 date and whatever time that it's at if you kept it at uh, the default or it changed it. Uh, do an apply and OK. And then it's going to go ahead and do some of the other setup on the uh, list here. So um, just let it run through and uh, do its thing here on that. Um, 
it'll finish through these things and then eventually it should pop up with this printer wizard uh, window here just go ahead and cancel that out and you do hear the audio is working uh, without even having to do any third-party install so that is uh, also another plus of this too you know it does uh, have its ability to work in VirtualBox or VMware but I do like how um, there's not a lot of uh, driver installation that you have to do after the install so uh, go ahead and hit OK to restart you can hear the shutdown sound as well uh, is also working um, so that does mean that the startup sound should work as well and of course this is still using the Windows 95 startup and shutdown sounds you do see the developer release um, boot screen there as well um, so to reboot it'll come up into this and it should log in directly into Memphis. Um, so as you can see, mouse is working just fine. Um, and it does have your uh, sound installed here. You can see that is here on the right side. And that is working as it should. Um, as for the graphics, uh, you can get this to go to 256 colors. Uh, if you hit apply, it'll have you restart. And so it'll restart the machine and now you can see it is in 256 color um, so that is also a plus there it does really get these good out of the gate so um, nice to see that there and you can even go into the settings and into control panel um, if you go to sounds you can play the uh, shutdown sound the sound is a little bit uh, glitchy for me um, may not be for you you know it kind of just varies uh, if you do want the startup sound to play, you'll need to go in, um, since it is says it's corrupted in there. Uh, if you go into the sound list here, uh, it's going to be the Microsoft sound. So you can play that. And as you can see, that does work. So if you do apply and hit OK, and uh, you can do a shutdown. Um, you can also suspend it. Um, but let's just do a restart. The shutdown sound works. Um, it'll do a quick reboot. We're just going to uh, go ahead and play the startup sound while we're at it. Um, so nice and easy tutorial here, I feel like, for this. Uh, I really am liking this in here. Um, as you can see, um, sound, of course, again, is a little bit glitchy, which is fine. Um, you know, it's going to have its uh, twists on that, but... Uh, other than that, that is the tutorial here on how to install Windows Memphis build 1351 in 86 box or PCM. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, certainly hope you guys do enjoy this video. I know a lot of you have requested for me to start doing some of these kinds of tutorials. So uh, this is definitely going to be a part of the future content of the channel, uh, doing some more of these videos, uh, especially a lot of beta videos um since they're easier to do on here versus virtualbox or vmware or any other virtualization software so uh if you guys did enjoy this video you can certainly leave a like down below um if you have any ideas for any future videos especially for 86 box pcm stuff uh leave a comment down below and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel uh if you aren't all right, uh, you can hit the subscribe button down below. I can also hit the post notification bell to be notified of my future uploads and to keep up to date on my content. Um, so again, this is uh, installing Windows Memphis build 1351 in 86 box or PCM. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.